Hello and welcome back to another book review. Today the Queen of Space Opera Strikes again with Lee Brackett's Last Call from Sector 9G. I read this in the ebook format as you can see. And in this novella there is a man desperate to get his career and chance at love back who takes on the simple mission to deliver a message to a distant planet in a distant region of space. But first of all, if you're new here, I post new book reviews almost every single day, and I have two book reviews already on Lee Brackett's work. So if that sounds interesting to you, feel free to stick around. So in The Last Call from Sector 9G, the story gets started right away. This is a novella, and this is, according to the ebook version that I read, only 83 pages, which means that the story is going to get started quite quickly. We meet Durham, who's a man that we quickly learn has fallen quite far in life. He is intoxicated, he is not happy with the way things are going. But he quickly receives an offer at the very beginning of the book to get all of this back. He is called to a man who we learn is the father of a woman that he was in love with and also sort of responsible for his demise at following some poor decision on his part and says, hey, you can have everything you've lost back, your prestige, your power, the positions, the doors you've had to open and a chance at the woman you love if you just deliver this message to a planet out there. You just have to go to the planet and you have to say this sentence and you can have all of this back. Durham, of course, jumps at this because he wants all of the things back in his life that he has lost and decides to get started on this. However, it becomes very clear to Durham that he was expected to fail at this job. So he goes out to celebrate with his girlfriend, who is not the woman he loves, a kind of girlfriend. It's kind of implied it's just a woman in his life. And he realizes in a moment of clarity in a bar that the person who told him to deliver this message actually wants him to divulge the message ahead. He is expecting Durham to be a man of low quality, a man who cannot be trusted, and he actually would like this message leaked in advance for whatever reasons of his own. Durham becomes quickly disturbed and is not sure what exactly he's agreed to, as well as becoming concerned about the woman who he's been associating with and some other people in the bar who begin chasing him when he realizes he doesn't want to really talk about the reason that he is leaving the planet. He makes his flight to his distant planet and he things seem to be going well. Things never seem to be going well. He falls in with the woman that he loved but was separated from because of her father and think it's just one thing after another because this whole flight and everything that was supposed to happen wasn't supposed to happen because Durham decided that he wasn't going to say something that he was supposed to say that he was told he wasn't supposed to say. There's some layering going on but the book is not actually very clear and from that point on things get quite crazy. So I don't want to go too far in the plot. It is only 83 pages and I feel like you can read this in a sitting or two. It's definitely not hard and I don't want to give everything away. But I did want to go into some analysis of the book that I read. The first thing I want to talk about is Durham as the character. Durham, in my opinion, is a morally gray character. He's not really a good person, but he is a good protagonist. I feel like I found myself cheering for him and wanting him to succeed, even though clearly he's made some very poor decisions. It's implied some poor decisions led to his downfall, and he makes quite a bit of quite a number of interesting decisions throughout this book that maybe aren't decisions that a typical pure-hearted hero would make. However, he's a very compelling character and I feel like I want him to succeed. We're seeing a man at a moment in his life decide I'm taking control of my future and I'm going to have uh, integrity as a man and I'm going to not, I was told to not dis divulge the secret and that person assumed that I wasn't a man with integrity and I would divulge it and I'm choosing to not do that because also I have some suspicions that the people who gave me this mission were nefarious. So we're seeing that and that makes this moment, this character change moment in the book makes Durham a very compelling character. It makes you want to cheer for the character throughout the book despite him not being a perfect character or a perfect hero. I think that Brackett also has the ability to build a very interesting world in a very short period of time. The plot moves along and there's a complete story, but also the world has been totally developed despite it being a novella length. Obviously we're not getting into the nitty gritty details of how all the politics work. Things have to be created with broad strokes in a novella because of length constraints, but the author is able to build all of this and you don't feel like things are rushed or key things are left out. I do not know if Brackett has one cohesive overarching universe that she writes all of her work in. I haven't read enough of that to figure it out. 
but I don't think that's necessary to know or not because this now this novella stands on its own for sure. There are some there are also some common sci-fi elements that have been repeated in other sci-fi works since then. I'm obviously not sure if Brackett did this first. In fact, I'm almost guarantee I can almost guarantee that Brackett did not do this first. I can guarantee that she was not the first person doing these concepts, but they're concepts that we see that we do see in future sci-fi, big sci-fi works. So that was just something that I wanted to comment on. The first is a planet that is a massive city and also the center of all inter intergalactic government. I'm thinking particularly in future sci-fi we have the city of Coruscant in Star Wars and we also have the Citadel from the Mass Effect series. I feel like those two are things that also have that are echoes of this idea of a city that's the center of intergalactic government and Brackett also has this in this book. We also have a massive planet killing machine which comes into play later in the book. I promise this all connects and that just having this big creepy thing that can wipe out a planet immediately I feel like has been used again in sci-fi and I also like that the scientists after building this thing decided to keep this thing around because it was interesting even though it could possibly kill their planet. So I do like the idea that scientists were like oh this could kill planets but it's interesting so let's just study it. I did like that little comment. How this book compares to Lee Brackett's other works. So I've, like I've mentioned before I've read two other works by her. The first one was another novella so I feel like that's one that makes sense to compare and that was The Jewel of Boz. This was actually a Retro Hugo finalist for the year 1945 and the Jewel of, between The Jewel of Boz and Last Call from Sector 9G, I like Last Call from Sector 9G more. The Jewel of Boz does have sci-fi overtones but sci-fi I feel like isn't explicit in the book. I feel like it could also be a fantasy book with a few tweaks to the setting. Well the Last Call from Sector 9G is very clearly sci-fi. I should hold this up. The Last Call from Sector 9G is very clearly sci-fi from the beginning. Also Last Call from Sector 9G has a lot of character development where Jewel of Boz is mostly just focused on the plot. The plot just goes. There's not really much by way of character development. The other piece that I read by Lee Brackett is The Long Tomorrow. This one's a little bit harder to compare because The Long Tomorrow is dystopian post-apocalyptic Earth in its full novel length. This was a finalist for a Hugo too. And this one really feels like Lee Brackett's masterpiece or one of her masterpieces. It is kind of hard to compare the novella to the novel, but um, I think one thing you notice between reading The Last Call from Sector 9G and The Long Tomorrow is Lee Brackett's really good quality writing style that carries through. I think whatever copy I read definitely needed some editing because there were some misspellings, but that's on the editor to catch. I don't think that necessarily reflects on the author's writing quality. So I think the Last Call from Sector 9G might be a really good entry point into reading Lee Brackett. Now I haven't read everything by her, but it's sci-fi, it's good quality writing, and I know a lot of people want to read but they don't have a lot of time to read. There's time constraints on the time that they have. They have kids, they have a career, they have other hobbies. So reading a novella link work like Last Call from Sector 9G is really accessible and approachable because it's 83 pages. If you read 20 pages a night, that's what, four days and you've got it complete. So in one week you can read an entire excellent piece of sci-fi from one of the classics, one of the greats, the Queen of Space Opera herself. And I think it's just a really great way to get started reading if you don't have a lot of time. So I highly recommend Last Call from Sector 9G. I really enjoy it. I actually, after reading this one, got another book out which I'm partly done reading and I will be reviewing and I'm pulling it up now. I'm reading The Moon That Vanished by Lee Brackett right now as well. So there will be another review of another short story or another novella by Lee Brackett because I've just been enjoying her work so much and even though I have a lot of other books that I need to read on my library shelf, I'm reading these because I just enjoy them again so much. It's good quality writing, it's fun sci-fi, and I really like them. If you've read this book, anything by Lee Brackett, or have anything you want to add, please put it in the comments below. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest.